<laughs> Let's begin with Sir Richard Owen. Tell me about Sir Richard Owen. Well, Sir Richard Owen was a, a great character and a great anatomist. Uh, he worked over a period of 40 or 50 years, mostly in the last century, but running over into the beginning of this century. He published hundreds of scientific papers in his lifetime. And as you probably know, he became the first director of this museum when it moved into, on, into its present site and was opened in 1881. And of course, among, among his scientific works were a large number of papers on dinosaurs. He produced the, the first scientific papers on many, many different fossils in this country. He was also a very uh, eccentric character and a lot of people found him very, very difficult to get on with. Explain that, eccentric? Oh, he had uh, he had very individual views about a lot of uh, scientific matters of the time, and he didn't get on with the other eminent colleagues in his field at the time, like uh, Thomas Henry Huxley. And they they had feuds going on for years between the two of them. Um, let's go back to when he coined the word dinosaur. Yes. Um, how do they see dinosaurs as compared to today? They saw them very differently to how we see them today. Um, they were thought to be rather large lizard-like animals, slow, lumbering, sort of super lizards. Um, not at all as we see dinosaurs now. Of course, there were only three or four different kinds known in those days. And when Richard Owen coined the name dinosaurs, there were only four different ones known. Those were? Uh, they were Megalosaurus, Iguanodon, Hyliosaurus. Hang on. And a uh, fourth to be named later. Well, um, the f I can't remember the name of the fourth one off okay. um, That isn't. Uh, that's check that one up. Yeah. Uh, maybe we could end up on the iguanodon and that yeah. discovery. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, the iguanodon is interesting to us because uh, it's represented there at the Crystal Park, um, Crystal Palace Park, I'm sorry. Yes. Uh, and they misrepresented. It, it's inaccurately portrayed. Oh, very much so, yes. Mm. How did that happen? I, explain how they, the mistake they made and mm. uh, how it was rectified. Well, at, the, at the time that that model was built, very little was known about dinosaurs and very little, uh, the tradition of comparing skeletons even of, of those animals with living animals hadn't really got very far. And because it was thought to be like a large extinct lizard, then it was made to look as much like a lizard as possible you know, on all fours, on all fours, four, four-legged, and uh, as the, the bones weren't actually found articulated together as a skeleton, they were somewhat scattered around, so they only had the model of a lizard to put it back together. In fact, its thumb spike was found in the ground somewhat detached from, from the, the hand, and so they thought the obvious place to put that was on the end of its nose. They thought it was a, a nose spike line, like a rhinoceros has. That we know now, of course, they were wildly inaccurate. Somebody corrected it later on. How do you make that discovery? How do you know that, that this thumb should not be on the nose? But uh... Well, somewhat later, on, in uh, the end of the last century, a lot of complete iguanodon skeletons were found, mostly in a, in a quarry in uh, Belgium. Actually, it was a, um, quite a deep quarry, a coal mine almost. And uh, complete articulated skeletons were found there. And of course, the thumb was in its proper place on the end of the hand. <laughs> Keep rolling. Sure. But if we could uh, do the iguanodon again, and if you could, yeah. the nice thing about tape is we can just keep doing as many times as we want until yep. you know. Right. Them, uh, we know from the from their anatomy of their skeletons, a lot of them could move extremely fast and could run very fast indeed. Were they and were very agile? Certainly, some of the later dinosaurs in the Cretaceous do seem to be com comparatively large brains. So I suppose yes, you could say they were quite intelligent. Were they family oriented? Yes, that's something we've only got to know about very recently in the last five years or so from evidence in uh, Western North America. We now know that the, they actually uh, nested in colonies rather like many birds do. And um, it was quite obvious that parental care was involved in looking after the young. Uh, there's evidence that the young remained in the nest for quite some time after they were hatched from their eggs and the parents brought food to them. Uh, so we think their parental care was as sophisticated as crocodiles. You mentioned a uh, dinosaur nest similar to a bird's nest. 
Others have suggested that uh, there are many similarities between the bird and the dinosaur. That yes, maybe the bird is the last living dinosaur. Do you agree? I do, yes. Uh, there are, again, there's been much debate among paleontologists in the last few years about um, whether there are any living descendants of dinosaurs. And uh, I think it's very likely that the bird story is quite correct, yes. Birds today are, are the descendants of dinosaurs. One particular group of dinosaurs, that is. Um, animals like Deinonychus um, was found in, that comes from North America in the Cretaceous. As simply as you can, explain why, I mean, what evidence, what similarities we mm. found between birds and that uh, group of dinosaurs. Yes, there is um, one particular fossil bird which is very crucial to this argument. That's one called Archaeopteryx, which comes from uh, the Upper Jurassic in Germany. And if you compare the skeleton of Archaeopteryx with contemporary Silurosaurian dinosaurs, little two-legged running dinosaurs, in many ways you can't tell the skeletons apart. There are so many similarities in gross, in uh, overall size and shape, and also in the details of the bones. They're extremely similar indeed, and the teeth, and many other features. Is there a similarity between the construction of bird hips and lizard hips? Um, not particularly, no. Um, you phrase the question and talk about the two kinds of dinosaurs. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, as a matter of they make distinctions. Uh, two basic groups of dinosaurs. There are bird-hipped dinosaurs right. and lizard-hipped. Why don't you just pose the question and let her 